Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, everyone, to the Miles and Crawford Variety Hour. Woo woo. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Snowmageddon. <laughs> Snowpocalypse. Snowpocalypse. We've, it didn't even happen, though, man. I'm really upset about that. We got a little bit of snow over here. It was a little nasty last night. Um, oh, it was nasty, but it wasn't like I was hoping for that, like, you know, yeah. fucking like 1978, you, you know, fucking 15 feet. Like, we wouldn't even have to worry about how it sounded because we would be so, you know, snuggled in by all that snow. I uh well I don't think we've ever lived through a blizzard before so uh not I mean we've lived through some snow but I was really hoping that we were gonna get you know something crazy and, and we did not so much fun. I know like and I was like okay this is gonna be it like you know we had the fifty degrees on Thursdays so it's gonna be like these insane winds and we're gonna have this snow and it's gonna be like we're we're gonna everything is gonna cancel everything is gonna shut down all weekend it's gonna be fantastic and then I was like oh. There's some, I mean, it got some ice and it got some, I mean, the roads were real shit yesterday, but now it's like, meh. Oh, they were awful. Yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. It went from 50 and now it's like, what, fucking 10 degrees outside. So we had, I mean, a serious, serious 40 degree temperature drop in like less than 36 hours, which is awesome. Yeah. I was at uh, work yesterday and I got there at 10 o'clock in the morning. It was just raining and blowing and whatnot. And then I ended up having this, I usually work till five. And then we were going to close at 6. I ended up not getting out of there until like 8, 30, 9 o'clock. I mean, it was late because um, we just kept staying open. And throughout the day, it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And by the time I look out the window, I mean, you could hardly see it was blowing. So I don't know if we got – we're only a half hour away, everybody. But uh, sometimes uh, a lot of the weather bypasses where I live, and it'll hit where Miles lives. It's crazy. It's so weird. And I don't know if it's just because, like, you have to climb up to get to Upper Sandusky. I've noticed that. You actually go up to come back from Fenland. You go down so to get strange. into Fenland, which I think is a little weird. But it is. Like, we really, usually, like, there'll be no snow here, and Fenland will have, like, eight inches. It's weird. So we got the snow this time. So it's, it's, what the fuck is my it's, we're doing? the roads are still that? really bad here. Okay, good. I'm no. glad. No, I do not. But. Let me let me turn let me turn it up. Hold on. Oh, okay. Well, I want to make no. sure it wasn't coming through. No, My I do not. My neighbor does all kinds of weird shit, and like, uh, dude, it's, it's so like true. He puts on like we, we got some weird neighbors, and uh, like last last winter, they are weird. Last last they winter, we weird. had a Winnebago living next to our garage with like an antenna attached, and I thought they were they were stealing our Wi-Fi and shit because our Wi-Fi would just like suddenly drop. I'm like, those bitches are stealing our Wi-Fi. Yeah, I don't know. We do, but I think we figured it out. Like I'm telling you, these our neighbors are real. Like I like them. Don't get me wrong; they're they're not bad people. They're real nice, but like they're real fucking strange. You know, like yeah. no, but they're no, not definitely your cup not my of cup of coffee. coffee. And you know. but, yeah, last winter we had like a huge, massive Winnebago because we share a driveway, uh, listeners, and uh, so we had this massive Winnebago with like this antenna, and it totally looked like we just looked. They have like five cars, and they had a Winnebago, so we looked like white trash, and um. Yeah, but then he does these things where he turns on, like, a random generator, like, 2 o'clock in the morning sometimes for, like, no reason. I don't know what he's doing. And it's like, fine, I'm not trying to sleep or <laughs> it's anything. It's so crazy. You know, with that antenna, Wi-Fi uses the air, so it could have been messing, even if they're not using your Wi-Fi. And um, you can always log into your router and see all the connected devices to, to your uh, network. So oh, yeah, I'll show that yeah. to you sometime if you want. If you ever want to, yeah, I totally want to see that, especially with these guys next door. Not that I think they're bad, but I really still think that they're like, we've got some really weird, like also like electrical wires that are weirdly grounded outside of our house. And I feel like they've tapped into them. I'm not saying that, you know, they're not using our electricity, but I think they have. I'm just, I'm just saying. Uh huh. Mm, you know what? I call the electric. No, I have. I'm just a bitch I'm, like I'm, that, I'm, though. I'm, you might take you. <laughs> Ain't nobody get well, a free ride like, on my tab. In a, I'm they're a doing Republican that in the spring. They're coming out, and I'm I'm having them do like a you pay like you know AEP like a hundred and some bucks, but they come out here and they like check all your all your lines and your wires, and you know they make sure that like everything on the outside of the house is one properly grounded, properly you know attached, and da da da, and then 
we just need an electrician in general, our house electricity. Like I'm really worried about the day that we find out that one of these light switches, cause we have like four light switches that we don't, that doesn't go into anything. And that worry. Right. And then we have like oh, a few weird. of our, um, and you know, Crawford has seen this, but we have like an insane amount of outlets into our house. Like, insane i think i counted them one day after we moved in and we have something like just within my house my house is only about 1500 square feet single floor ranch style home and we have like 60 outlets inside the house that's not counting what's in the garage which is like another like 20 or 30 in the garage <laughs> the garage is amazing i'm like we usually in the summer times that's where we podcast I, at. there's just outlets <laughs> for life i mean plug our phones in we plug our mixer in we got laptops we still got plenty of outlets it's so what crazy but i'm waiting for the day that here. we like find like I, and i wonder if they all are actually properly grounded because our last owners you know as we've been finding out as we're renovating parts of our house little by little is about how shitty they actually you know what looked to be nice work once you pulled off or pulled back you're like oh they totally jerry rig this entire house and so I told Aunt, uh-huh. you know, I told my husband, like, hey, we really need to make sure that we, you know, uh, when some of these good commission checks start hitting in the spring, summertime, we get an electrician, we pay them the money, and they uh-huh. really come through and, and gut and find out what's dead, take it out if it's not working, you know. And plus, you, that shit can well, just eat up your electricity. We have, like, a baseboard in our bedroom that doesn't even work, that doesn't put out any electricity, you know, any heat whatsoever. So I wonder if that's, like, a dead wire or a dead baseboard, you know. Uh, I remember when we were recording in the garage, we were getting feedback and we figured it out. It was because I think it was because we were using one of the outlets. And when we changed yeah, it, the buzzing had stopped. I'm done. The whole house was just fucking like, you know, I, I there are times, especially in the winter, that I really do worry about the house. Like, I'm going to come home and the house is just going to be all up in flames. And it's like, it's a catch 22. Like, I'll be super, super sad if the house caught on fire and we lost everything like it would be devastating but at the same time uh with our insurance policy right. like we get like twice what our house is actually worth like our house is like 95 but we get like two hundred thousand hey, dollars in like fire insurance you know so it's like you, you should probably just let that battle yeah you know and just like let the shit like then. go you know <laughs> make sure that the puppies and the, and the kitty cat are out of the house and you know obviously the things too and uh but like right. just let it go like all right cool <laughs> no, this podcast is evidence now that you knew there was a problem. <laughs> we just—I mean, the sad part is, sold especially you in America. Girl. I mean, I'm gonna blackmail I you. Like, you better give me half of that, or I'm gonna tell. But I mean, oh, I mean, and that's the sad part is that right now, a days though. I mean, there's a lot of people who, I mean, it, it would be better for them, you know, to let their house go up into flames or to to go bankrupt on their house because they're so. They're so doubled in it, you know, and 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 the and the housing crisis, which isn't really a housing crisis yet, but it's getting ready to get there because, you know, it's it's a really good seller's market right now. It's not really for the buyers, but um, nope. You know, all the all the people are buying them up and use them as rental properties, yeah. so people can't own their own homes. You know, I don't know if it's still true, but a couple of years ago there were more empty houses yeah, that's, that, than that's homeless still true. people. That's still true. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, because it would be sense. terrible to you know give homeless people how- houses. I just I don't. But over, I just I don't understand. My son ran in from a a lady, and she was like, "Yeah, I've got forty five rentals. Like y- you own forty five properties in a town of forty five thousand people. Don't you think that you know some people would like to own some of your shitty little properties? <laughs> no, I don't know. it does. That just it, me. It, it, that, it, it, it really bothers me. Well. People should be buying them just to rent them out. They're they're buying all those low income houses or houses that are only like forty or fifty thousand dollars, and so basically the only houses that are available to buy are 100, 200, 300, 400, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars that nobody can afford, and all the ones that they can afford, land slumlords, landlords have bought them, and so you can't buy a uh, house because they're all rentals. Well, exactly, and that's university. the other problem is that, uh, and, and not only that, but the houses that are cheaply available um, come with, uh, they're in the flood zone. And so, yeah, you can buy, like, we we had, before buying this house, I had found the perfect house. It was awesome. It was only um, $87,000. It was two stories. It had a fully, like, two-tier um, back wooden deck, massive backyard, fenced in, loved it. Perfect. Awesome. Guess what it came with? $10,000 a year flood insurance. 
So yes, oh. I could get the house for a hell of a steal, but after I mean, but every year we'd have to pay an extra ten grand on in property and housing taxes um, for flood insurance. And I'm like, I can't. Nope. No, 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 no. That's not. That's that. Who that's not. The- that's not feasible. So yeah, I'm getting a hell of a steal. And it, the thing is, the water never even actually got into the house. It would get more um, in all, like on the property because the backyard, the way it sloped or whatever else. But I'm like, so the the house itself right. really doesn't flood. They're like, no, but because it's in the flood zone, you're and where it's located in it, um, this is yep. what you're gonna pay. And I'm like, yep, nope, sorry, and that sucks because it was it was ideally like my perfect home, and I mean full size basement, and you couldn't get that anywhere um, in Finley for that kind of price. But you know, it was it came with a price, and everything in this town, like you can find a reasonably priced house, but it comes with, yeah. you know. Uh, or even reasonable rent, but you're living in a neighborhood that is almost always going to flood. You know, you're going to come with damages, mold, all that. Yep, lots of mold because or they don't clean the properties properly, you know? It's ridiculous. I was going to buy a house, too, and it was just gorgeous. It was a ranch style, one floor only, kind of like yours. It had a loft, and it was right by the park, so I had a deck with double doors, and when I went out on the deck, I could sit there, even from inside my house, I could see, but I could see oh, the yeah, dam yeah. at the park right from my double doors. Um, and I was going to buy the house and they were like, oh yeah, this didn't flood. And I found a picture and the house hadn't flooded because I, I found a picture from back when the big, we had a, there was a historic flood back in this town. Yes, it um, sure was. 2007, was it? And so that's the issue in the town where Miles lives is that there was a historic flood about 10 years ago and it ruined almost every house in that town. So when we went in there, they were like, oh, yeah, there was no flood damage. I found a picture that didn't look like it had had flood damage. Um, we lived there for about six months before the entire house. We had to, like, move to a hotel because there was black mold everywhere. They had just painted over it and tried to shellac it. And then they tried to get us to buy it before we figured it out. You know what I mean? But not like I wouldn't have an inspector come in anyways. I mean, I live right next door to the fucking river. But it was the same thing. It was sloped up on a hill. So... There was a uh, flood that almost was historic the year that we lived there, and it came right up to the house, but it never flooded. So uh, it's really hard to find a rental over there in Finley that hasn't <laughs> been affected by the flood and uh, black mold and all that other nasty stuff that comes with it. So, you know, you either got to rent from some asshole or buy a flood house or not buy anything at all because what did I see? I saw over where I live, it's much yeah, cheaper. Um and I've been finding, yeah, uh, well, rent over in Finley is going anywhere Ridiculous. from nine to twelve hundred dollars right now for like a two bedroom. Um, just the other day, I saw a posting for an apartment, about an apartment over here for nine hundred dollars a month. Like, did you move <laughs> from Finley over here and think like, that you're going to get that? Nobody's going to pay that here. This is a very, you know what I mean? Like, that rent's just not. Nobody's like you can get a two bedroom mm-hmm. house here for six hundred well, exactly. a month. Nobody's paying no nine hundred dollars. Well, exactly, for your it's kind duplex. of the same where uh, when you go over to uh, Fostoria because we we considered living over in Fostoria because um, what we're paying for our house, you know, uh, the ninety five thousand dollars that we paid down for the house, you could go over to Fostoria and be able to get the same uh, payment on the house, but it be like a four to five bedroom house, two bathroom, you know, backyard. Da 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 da. Um, and there's nothing wrong. Fostoria actually has less crime now than Finley, where for many a years it was actually swapped. It was opposite, where Fostoria used to have a lot of problems with that. I yeah, I lived in Fostoria for six years, seven years. I went, I moved there when I was eleven, and I moved away when I was seventeen, eighteen. But I still would go there a lot because I didn't really know anybody in Finley. Um, Fostoria, I was going to say, it used to be really bad, and you're right. Um, it's a very diver- diverse commu- community. Um, whereas in Finley, which ever since Hurricane Katrina, everybody kind of scattered out of New Orleans. Houston got a huge population of black people. And I don't know if you noticed right after Hurricane Katrina, but suddenly Finley got an influx yeah. of black people because people came north. Yeah, we need which the I diversity thought was great, here. Finally, you know, because Finley for the longest time was like <laughs> 85% white. But over. 20 minutes away over in Fostoria it's blacks, Mexicans, Asians, well not not a lot of Asians honestly, um, and white people. And the great thing about Fostoria is back then when I lived there it's changed a little bit. Um, they, they really try. Uh, everybody was poor. So um, 
they they have a very close knit community. Like if one yeah. hurts, everybody hurts. You know, they have they have double the aid agencies <laughs> that Finley has. Uh, they're half the size of Finley. Um, it's a very diverse community. The only the only uh, pullback from that is that because the uh, it's uh, not a very rich town, oh, yeah, the school they had a suffer a lot. Last like, week get, because they had like a, a, a small a fire in most of the. Uh, and, and, and both the uh, junior high school, junior and high school, I think I think they're like next to each other, but they had to shut down oh. for like three days because um, I, I, an electrical outage and that the school was rebuilt. I remember when I was in middle school, so uh, many a moon ago, uh, 20 years ago, uh, yep. Um, yep. but in 20 years, they haven't, they've done nothing since then. You know, they, they, they built this really nice new school, but you're talking about in 20 years, um, it just, it's, that nice new school, I was the first, uh, I was in sixth grade back then when they built that, and my class was the first class to and go it's to so school beautiful when that. you get all those brand new, brand new middle schools. I mean, we, we got two new ones um, over the yeah. last two years, and... Jesus, oh, it does. Like it a does. I mean, and you go inside, and the inside isn't nearly as fantastic as the outside. I guess would be the way. I mean, it still looks like your basic, um, you know, it looks like your basic middle school. But I mean, it's it's nice. I mean, you got brand new gym floors, and I remember, you know, Glenwood especially for long years. I mean, it was where I went to school, which was Central Middle School. Um, has now uh, been like three fourths demolished, and then they rebuilt it into a uh, performing arts center. But I was really. Th- Oh, it's so beautiful, oh, and, and I'm beautiful. so glad they kept the auditorium because the auditorium really was just, it was always a shining piece of that middle school. Um, but those middle schools really were uh, very, very, uh, Glenwood and Central were definitely old. You know, they were definitely beat up. I mean, there would be times where I went back there, um, just kind of walk around the halls when I got older, and you, but you could see that there nothing had been cleaned or changed, and especially when the 2007 flood hit, uh, Central Middle School was in the middle of that flood, and it destroyed all of the documents. It destroyed their entire basement. You know, it destroyed all it the offices, sure the cafeteria, did. all that kind of stuff, and so that, you know, it really sucked. Um, and they tried really hard to get that school back up and running, but there just wasn't a way to do it, so I understand why they had to um, but I don't like the way they split up only now. We don't have the three middle schools. We only have the two. They are going yeah. to become overcrowded um, if Finley continues to grow, um, which is always a – it's one of those funny things because we're one of these top three micropolitans in the United States or whatever it is. But I'm like, but we offer nothing to anybody here. We, we, yes, we offer these two new middle schools, but there's – we don't have any money in the bank right now of an influx of people moving in here we don't have we ha- we're creating like three new huge massive factories are calling for you know six eight hundred new jobs but we don't have the housing community for them nor do we have anything our, our mall is fucking terrible here and and the schools well what are you gonna do <laughs> it is, the thing is like the schools, what are you gonna do with that because our elementaries and intermediate schools have already had to add in um trailers to the back and added you know classes in there and the first the first yep. two years of those yep. uh, trailers were open, they didn't even have proper heating or cooling. And so these kids were, you know, in the in the you know August when they start school, um, you know, the hottest month. Yeah, Just they won't. They, can't, they don't even turn like the lights. Poor, they don't even turn I mean, the lights in, in the classrooms because it got so hot in there. And I'm like, how is this a, a good learning environment? And not only that, but we decided to upgrade our our high school. We put like three million dollars into this brand new tech center into our high school. Great, because that's what we want to showcase. Look at our high school. Look at our field. That's yep. all we care about is athletics and how their high school looks. And you know, another thing I wanted to bring up when we we're talking about the flood, which I know we're just talking about our towns and stuff, but I think that a lot of our listeners yep. they have the same issues in their town. So hopefully, they're able to be like okay when are they gonna not get going to uh, <laughs> but you know what i mean <laughs> no I mean, but this is america this is it, but this is, this so is america well at its core i mean we live in the down. state of ohio and you know our population from toledo to cleveland right and it's repeated yeah i mean from, from here to, to cincinnati you know i mean there's it, it affects us but if you look across the board in other states i feel like other listeners and other states or countries can um, either let us know what they're doing better than us, which is a lot of things. There's a lot of people who are doing a lot better than what we are. <laughs> um, well, you know, I read the guardian a lot and I find that, um, a lot of times I'll read articles that are for the UK and they're not for the USA and they use different terms and then they have different programs that are about the same, just, you know, just slightly different. 
especially in England. And I've always noticed that anything that happens in England, you can always expect to happen here, the attitudes or whatever, six months later. Um, Finlay does not have building codes. So if you rent from somebody, you ever notice how many rentals just burn down, buildings just burn down in Finlay? It's because there are no building codes. Uh Uh-huh. Um, there are no building codes. Like I rented from a lady and my outlet caught on fire and the fire and she told me I had to pay to repair it. And I was like, no, I don't. So I tried to find out like to complain to the building code. You know, I was trying to find out who does that, you know, like what city office do I call about building codes? Come to find out. I think I ended up talking to the county commissioner. It's not, that's not what he was, but, uh, I'm not going to look it up or take time to think about what he was. Um, and he was like, well, Finley doesn't have building codes. So that's why you have, I've been in some very, very, very uh, bad rentals over in Finley. Actually, uh, somebody in my family was living in the, uh, it's called the crack house of Finley yeah. or uh, the awesome. castle, uh, as some people call it. And I had never been in there until recently. And it, I have not seen a place that run down and slap shackled. And, and you can just smell the mold in it. I mean, the place should be condemned. It really should just... Be, it's beautiful out on the outside. I mean, it needs to be painted, but the architecture Absolutely. of it is gorgeous. You know? and But the inside of it... I mean, there's orange shag carpet on the walls, Miles. Orange. And when you go in, you can see where there used to be waterfalls on the walls on the entrance. Because there's like a trough. Or a trough. Sorry. And the water would come down the walls and go in, but that doesn't run anymore. It's just uh, got trash in there now. And leaves. You can drive by there right now, and you can see the front front doors to the place are still cracked open. Like they don't even have a way to. Yeah, they don't even have a place to shut. And like, and I find out weird because I've seen the cops pulling into that house on so many occasions, and I don't see them with their lights on. I don't see any bus going on there, but I'm like, you know, is is this where we're putting? Yeah, yeah, but I'm like, why are you know? And again, like (laughs) I said, it's. It's a known place because once the Argyles built down, and all the Argyles was a, a major downtown building. Yeah. Um, now, for low-income people, and it was beautiful, it and it was wrong. It like was hot as it was hot as hell in the summer, and it was included. cold as balls in the winter. I had been up there on, on both occasions, but original hardwood flooring, mm-hmm. original brick, original. Just they were, but Gorgeous. they were for low-income. Granite floors, red carpeted. Yeah, but they were. But you know how many low-income people? I mean. How many apartments do you think were in that building? It was like a three-story, four-story building. I, I would say two hundred apartments. Maybe that's. I would too say. Much. I, mean, I would say over a hundred that you know uh, but, uh, that we were able to to like you said, but back and you had mentioned this on the, one of our prior podcasts is that um, back in the day, downtown area was where all of our social needs were met. You know, you could go. The Argyle yes, house, and now most they of those that burnt down, and they have nowhere to go. And, and when it wasn't the Argyles. Yeah, they rebuilt. They but now rebuilt. everything they've rebuilt downtown is um, the new Ralston Lofts. Now those things are oh, spectacular. I mean, she's a weird. Yeah. Oh, those are for the exactly. marathon folks. That's why they are redoing it all for marathon oil, which um, a lot of our American listeners um, are probably familiar with marathon. Um, they're based in Houston, but their main headquarters is uh, in Finley, where Miles lives. Um, and they've recently taken yeah. over, what, two blocks now? The Argyle is right across the street from the Marathon building. So all these poor people could look out their windows straight into the office yep. windows of these Marathon folks. The building burnt down. They never rebuilt it. They couldn't. Um, what are they turning that know. into it, now? It's still, I, I, I saw something been, that they were talking about. They finally found like a buyer for the property. I'm just not sure what they're turning it into. And the last apartment um, that was diagonal uh, that Chris had, you know, lived in. Um, now that one, I mean, yes. again, yes. that one burnt down too. Burnt and down again, too. Um, there wasn't sufficient fires. There wasn't a, an official fire alarm system. Um, building codes. There building was none codes. of that that was in there. And uh, there and, and so the he never heard the fire alarms and you know, uh, and unfortunately he had passed away in that. But they at least turned that into a, a park and then yeah. into like a little sitting area and they actually at least made it pretty. And they and that happened within a year. Yeah, but they wouldn't honor him. And that, that upset me. Um, we're talking about somebody that we both knew. Um, he had a strong presence and um, Finley is a very uh, up to do up the uppity community um you go to school you get straight a's you participate in all your extracurriculars you're in band cheerleading flag football 
soccer wrestling, you go to college and then you become a white collar. And if you don't do that, you're not cool and people look down on you in a fair way. And then there is this small sect of people who are, are like Miles and myself. And a lot of our, it's, we don't hang out with everybody since our 20s, but you know, from our 20s on, oh, yeah. we all hung downtown. We hung Love out them. at these little shithole bars that aren't there anymore. The artists, you know, there was a Jones building and um, Chris Coley, which I hope a couple of local listeners are at least listening and, and remember Chris Coley. He um, was a, a really great artist and um, he had a strong impact on the community as far as everybody knew him. He was so kind hearted. I mean, I can't say enough nice things about Chris. Um, and then that's who we're talking about that passed away in an apartment above. There's a lot of apartments above the business buildings downtown. He passed away. Um, yeah. Smoke inhalation, I believe. And that's what it was. Uh, it? And they tore it down. They turned it into a park. And there was a big argument about they wanted to display some of his art. And, and the community was like, he was a gay man. And nobody wanted to celebrate the gays back then. Because this has been what? Jeez. Uh, he passed away. And- we had- yeah, we were, uh, we, were in North, my, we were in North Dakota when my, that happened. My youngest so that son had, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been over 10 years because we were in North Dakota when he passed. I mean, it literally happened really. Uh, yeah. 14, 15, 16, I would say 16 years ago, probably. Um, but anyways, back to the point is there's no building codes. And if there had been building codes enforced, maybe he'd still be alive and with us now because they would have had to make sure that that stuff, I think it was electrical. And we've had that, three buildings that downtown that have all been burnt but, down through electrical fires. This is not. Not to mention all the residentials yeah. that, I mean, it's, it's almost a weekly event where you'll see like family loses everything in a fire around here. It's Well, it's, it's because right now, especially with constant. something that we don't address enough is that uh, the income equality across the board um, it affects, it, we talk about this on a national level, but it, it affects locally and that we don't, you know, we're, we're trying to bring to light about, um, the, the underserved here in Finley, Ohio. Um, they have finally have approved for, um, a new set of, of housing development, um, uh, that it should be more affordable finally, but. Oh, that's because of all the complaining because they can't fill all those low income jobs because nobody's going to drive over from, these little dunk towns outside of Finley to come work for a minimum wage job. That's just not you with the gas right and everything. Now. And Fostoria used to have a rule or they had a law um, where you could, uh, because if, and I don't know if it's just Ohio or if that's a national thing where if you live in one town and you work in another, you have to pay taxes, you still city have taxes that. to both towns. My brother live in that because he works out in Ada. Okay. And so they have to pay Ada taxes. And then with the taxes that they get back every year, cause they have the two children, um, they actually end up having to use a majority of that money to pay the city of Finley, um, city tax. So they, cause they live in Finley, but he works in yep. Ada. So he has to pay both. Yep, and they, they and every money. year he has to pay double taxes. And again, it's not because my brother lives in Finley and he has a great uh, a great work ethic. But again, for the money that he uh, can make out in Ada, he can't make here in town, so he has to drive out. He's a maintenance uh, guy, and and he doesn't want to work. Um, right. He doesn't want to work twelves. He's in his he's he's in his forties now. No one, I mean, it's hard to work those twelves anymore. 12 hours is ridiculous. It, it is. That's half your fucking day. And then if you work, if you get eight hours of sleep, that's 20 hours. You got a whole and that's four just hours, hours up, left in coffee, your day. Taking a shower, taking a not, shit, and no. eating food. I mean, that doesn't even include you're getting your grocery shopping or, you know what I mean? Like, is that, that oh, it drives me crazy. Now. Work is yeah. so centric our lives. Work till you die. Basically. Yeah. Work, 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 work. Like, it's okay for you to have to work no. two jobs. And no, the, it's the not. That sucks no. is that he I'm only gets now like a job in Ada pays him the money that he needs. Where's our pursuit we don't of happiness, hurt. No, Miles. no, no. We don't Sorry to interrupt you. He doesn't. He has, now this job pays him right, well, right? But here's this. He didn't have a day off from Thanksgiving to Christmas. After Thanksgiving break, his two days off he got from Thanksgiving, he worked every single day without a day off. He's only working eight hours, but sometimes he's working 20, 20, 30 days in a row before he gets a day off. Like, and that's, again, like you said, pursuit of happiness. Where does he get it? He can't get it because he's not working 12s, but he also has to work, you know, 20, 30 days in a row to get a day off because there, there's, how do you do that? You know, that's not, that's yeah. not, that's work to die, work to die. I'm sorry, but, um, what was that? 
I was gonna finish, I almost forgot to finish my point. Fostoria had a uh, law, or I'm not, I'm not real sure what they would call it or whatever, but they, um, if you worked in another town, they had like a tax credit or whatever, so that you didn't have to pay taxes on both to make it more affordable. It was either they excused, they pay, I, I don't, I'm not exactly how it worked, but I remember it being a big deal because I, um, like I said, I went to, I went to school from middle school through high school in Fostoria. Um, and so I still have a lot of friends on Facebook that I see who still live in Fostoria and complained about the fact that they did away with that. So now before they, they got the benefit of being able to work in Finley and live in Fostoria, but only having to pay taxes to one city and they did away with that. And I think it had, I think it was Fostoria that paid for it and it was just running their budget into the ground and they couldn't do it anymore. But you know, that was just. It was trying to help and out the community. And the part is that we don't have the money any longer to help um, out the community. I mean, it's funny. We don't have the money to help anybody out anymore because we need to fund the war machine and people need to work for ridiculous. fucking Medicaid. And that's ridiculous. thing is like, you know, even... That pissed me off to read this week. At least Ohio's not included. Now, I'm not a big fan of our governor, John Kasich, yes. who... It's Kasich. Kasich. It's Kasich. Um... A lot of people are probably familiar with his name just because he was a presidential candidate. Um, I really wasn't a fun. No. I didn't vote for him. Um, and I don't always agree with what he has to say, but he really does care about Ohioans. He refused to roll back Medicaid because he was like, absolutely not. The opiate crisis in my state right now, if I were to do that, I would have bodies on piles, bodies upon bodies. I mean, he does have a human yes. element to him, and I like that. I like that about him, even though... Our politics don't always align. I am finding myself slowly agreeing with him more and more and more. You know, like some things I'm still like, you're a dick, dude. But I like that he cares about people. And that's not something that you know. And I think that's one thing that uh, Ohio can that we can say that we we may have not always gone the right route. Okay, I we we have a gerrymandering problem. We have a police killing problem down in Columbus. Columbus is one of the top 10 Uh, uh, cities in the United States of America for cops killing people. Um we recently got there this past year. Finley yeah, is uh, a police state. I go over there once a week, maybe, Amanda. And I, I'm sorry, Miles. <laughs> um, I go over there. I know. We've called it. I, people know. I know. But, you know. <laughs> we try to stick to the script. <laughs> uh, and I'm not joking. Uh, one, I'm going to say out of ten trips, I bet you I get pulled over six times. And there's nothing wrong with my car. I wear my seatbelt, do the speed limit, all my lights work. But I get pulled over. You know what I got pulled over for three times in the last year? Uh, pulling up to a stop sign and telling me that I'm pulling up to the white line with my tires and not my hood. That's what they're doing now. Failure to obey a traffic They will do anything signal. here. And it's true. Um, I've I've talked about it is. It's a police state. Like there's 45,000 people in this town and I keep getting pulled <laughs> over and I'm no, just busy. It, it's not a lie. It's a uh, Search my car. I got nothing on. I don't bring my right. weed and, uh, with uh, me. Well, that's I mean, I can't tell you. I, mean, I think a lot of uh, uh, road trips in general for my job, and just because I love to drive, and. Uh, there's times where it's it really is. I as soon as I get out of this town, I don't see a cop for fucking ever. But the moment that I see Finley send seven miles, bam! I'm like cruise control. Boom. Do this because I know that as soon as I even roll like into this town, even from out of town, that it's the very first thing I'm going to see is I'm going to see the cops and they're yeah. and they're waiting. And um, I you know you can. See- my anxiety gets so high when I have to drive over and they park there. everywhere. Like, they park oh, in the church parking lot. They park in uh, the water department, and they just sit on the side of the road waiting to buy somebody doing forty three and a thirty five. I mean, they're waiting for it. Yeah, and the crime rate and over people there aren't is out speeding of because they have a bunch of drugs on them. Maybe they should get off of the streets and tackling us over dumb shit and actually getting the drugs off the streets. And that's you know we're having a huge problem that's of. Exactly. I mean, everybody I know across the board is having a, a huge opiate heroin problem. Of, you know, and that doesn't not affect us. And but, but we are we're busting people. I mean, our task force is. I just read today that we busted somebody else. I mean, we're just we're finding the drugs everywhere in this town, um, and with that is also um, is human trafficking. And I get to uh, go to the pleasure of uh, on the 25th of this month. I'm going to go to a uh, a seminar that we're having um, in town about what to look for for human trafficking because it's been talked about for the last like two years. Uh, and luckily, Heidi. Um, who ran for our city council. She is a, a huge advocate for it and was able to bring this up to city council last week. And now we're doing a seminar to uh, teach the cops and local law enforcement. We have FBI coming in and somebody sharing their story from the area that was uh, was sex trafficked um, out of our town. 
and um, it's it's one of those oh, uh, stories yeah. that it's it's terrible, but at the same time, uh, with with the influx of drugs, you're going to see an influx of trafficking. And do we know uh, what what should I be looking out for? Because I I do I watch people all the time. It's what I, if I go to your local Walmart or Myers or wherever, I do I pay attention very much to the public about how people are acting. You know, and, and if, I, if I see something wrong, because I try to. Um, you know, I do. I, I'm on. I'm I, especially as a single woman, or if I have my kids with me, I'm very aware of, of the public all the time because I mean, oh, it's it's little me. things that can happen out of nowhere, and I try to make sure that we're always being aware. But worst of all is that how if you know there is somebody and you're standing in line with a guy and what could be his young daughter or could be a victim, um, and things and things that we need to look out for. Exactly. But you know, it took our town. Um, so long to understand this. They thought that this was a problem going on. Oh, this is going on an hour north of us or an hour south of us. Okay, but that's just it. We have a main, we have I-75 that runs through this town. We have a lot of these, you know, Super 8, you kind of lodge, you know, kind of uh, cheaper rundown, you know, motels and hotels right along the interstate. And these are where they're staying. This is where the drugs are happening. This is where the trafficking is happening. And if you're more worried about whether or not I'm going 43 miles an hour in a, in a 35 than you are about children being locked up in hotel rooms here, then, then your, your priorities are fucked. And, uh, and I think that across the board, we yeah. all need to be more aware of what's going on. Uh, uh, nationally because it does affect us locally when you start seeing these stories popping up on social media it isn't like oh my god this person's being political it's no open your fucking eyes for 30 seconds and realize that there is a lot of you know lower income lower impoverished people who don't have the correct housing who are willing to sell their kids uh sadly enough to pay the bills um or to fix their habits or to yeah. you know who have are you know trouble getting clean and because of that they're they're going to other outlets and i think that people um really don't understand how far back this goes and when you live in small condensed towns that don't have open eyes to their own community because they'd rather see look at us we have these brand new buildings we created these new roads we have these new middle schools okay great but let's also look at what we don't have and we don't have um you know the proper transportation to get people who are impoverished to get to their jobs they have to move out of town because they can't afford to live here and we can't grow a society as a whole or a community if we're not taking care of them we have to we have to take care of each other and and that's something that we've lost uh -oh. is and i know go. i, I feel like we again. preach about this every single oh there you are am i really Wait. huh now you're good go am back I okay? to where you started Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, we've lost that community feeling where you mind your own and you don't care. And if you see a little kid lost, you don't do anything. What do you do? You call the police. Well, if you knew your neighbor, you know that that three year old, because kids are kids, you know, you can do your very best. But, you know, if you nap with your two or three year old, uh, my kids got out, you know, once or twice. And, you know, they go out the door, they want to go play. And, people call the police or, and then the police come and then they file child protective services when you you know back in the day when i was a kid and i ran off boy my mom's neighbor would come drag my ass home by the ear like your daughter was out by the you know what i mean they say well you should mind your children that's true but when we were <laughs> kids we ran all day you know we come in and check in for lunch for snacks to get a drink you know we checked in every i'd say oh, yeah. give them a call let me know that you made you know, it there safely like you get to your friend's house even if it was you know two or three blocks away and the mom said okay come right. home by dark okay and then you yeah right and, and you did. and like i love those little uh posts that are out there like uh when <laughs> when your mom thinks you're staying at your friend's house but you're really out in the field getting drunk off vodka wondering if you're gonna die or not you know I'm like but that really what <laughs> but it was true that <laughs> that was youth and that's what that's you're supposed youth. to be doing not like i mean not getting like so drunk that you're dying or anything out in the field but but nowadays i right, right, right. and it's funny because you know me and my husband often talk about you know when did when did things change because you know i'm a yeah when it, i 80s. was a latchkey kid you know that's what they call absolutely us. they called us, they called us latchkey yes. kids right that was our generation where you know basically yes. like you you know you, you had a key to your house yeah our parents worked our all parents the time worked. and now we're back there and the problem is now though the problem is, is that back, yeah. we're not allowed to leave our children unattended. You know, we're, we're, we're sheltering our kids so much now to the point of, they're not allowed to be left alone, but then <laughs> at 18, we're supposed to just set them free. And then they're completely shocked by how the world is. Yeah. Like, people oh, are, wow, people, people are, are terrible mean. human beings and you, you know, or, you know, or, you know, like 
we're sheltering them to the point where they don't understand how the real world works, that not everybody's nice. Not, here's the biggest thing with me is trying to get the point across that life is not fair. It, no, that's not fair. You know what I mean? Like trying to explain something like, yeah, no, you're right. It's absolutely right. You know, I'm talking about like me talking to one of my sons or something like, no, you're right. That isn't fair. But, you know, there's not a whole lot you can do about it, especially like with my oldest son. You know, he worked at a restaurant and uh, he worked really hard. and He was showed up all the time. But the manager's uh, son-in-law, who was a drug addict and, and didn't want to work, she got him a job at the same restaurant. And uh, they said after the holidays that they'd only be able to keep one. And Andrew was upset because he was like, they should keep me. And they let him go and kept her son-in-law. And I told him, I said, here's why. You know, I was like, no, that's not fair. You know, and but she had to get him a job because he wouldn't work anywhere else so of course they're going to pick him over someone who works harder even though it hurts their business and it doesn't make sense but you know just a situation like that like no life isn't fair you know it, it, it's just people are mean things just don't work the way they make it seem like it's going to on tv and in school no and i, and know, I would agree i mean i've got easy. you know a 10 and an 8 year old and you know i'm constantly talking to you know other mothers um you know from my my own job or just other mothers that are my age that have kids at the same time about you know um when we when do you quote unquote trust your kids when do you allow them you know that that ability Exactly. And that's, ex- and that's really what it is. I said, you know, I can trust my kids um, to be at home for two hours by themselves. And I know that, you know, they're going to, if I have to work late at work, um, you know, I know they'll call me as soon as they walk into the door. Uh, they'll lock the front door. They hang out in the back room. I say, you know, pretty much just here are your chores, but all their chores are where there's not a major window where anybody can see there's two kids without any cars, you know, in the driveway. Um, you know, I, I try to do my best to make sure that my kids are, are protected. Um, but at the same time, I also, like you said, I don't want to, uh, stop them from the realities of the world. And, and I mentioned this last podcast where I've got a 10 year old who's very bright and very aware of the surroundings. Um, and my eight year old as well, um, is very aware of the way that, of how society works and it sucks. But here's my thing is that I know that in four or five years from now, uh, but five years from now when they both, you know, especially when, uh, my oldest starts getting his own job, when he starts looking out there, cause he's so excited to work. Um, but he's very aware about how hours aren't fair or how things work out. I mean, he's already talking about, well, mom, if I join a sport, can I also have a job too? You know, and how does that work out? And he wants to know, I tell him, you know, your probably your first jobs are going to be like being a busser, you know, working in the restaurant business, you know, and, and, or working at the local ice cream shop or something along those lines. And yes, they will work around their school schedule if they're good people and they may not and you may float from job to job to job you know and that's just kind of how that's teenage that's that's just teenager life but if you want you know your sense of independency you know i don't know what kind of money me and your father are going to be making or what kind of state our nation's going to be in five or six years from now so i can't promise you um that you know you won't be able that you that your job's going to go just in your pocket that we might need you to help out you know like i don't know what where our nation's going to be but you know i'm i feel like i'm able to let him you know when his friends come over in the springtime if they want to go down to uh, a park you know i'll walk them down there but then i'll i'll go on my own adventure and then by at least get them there safely um but I used to walk to the park and play by myself all the time. And there was a woman that was arrested or charged with child endangerment, whatever, because she let her eight year old walk to the park and play. That was common when we were kids. We all met at the local playground and, and then we come running home because some kid pushed us off the swing. You know, I, I can understand a three, five, maybe even a seven year old. And each kid's different. You know, like both my kids are different. Andrew is much more independent at an earlier age than my younger son. And uh, you, you have to parent each kid differently. And, and a lot of times when kids growing up, they don't understand that to about each other. We have to because X amount of years like, ago, well, you, you the them. heroin wasn't around. You, you, you didn't have the needles They're that different. were laying on the sidewalk that yeah. you do now. And that's another thing, too, is I tell everybody, like, it's not just about, right. you know, and it, it does obviously have a lot to do with how your children are raised. And it's not that you're trying. The environment's the environment much different now. back then. You know, it's not that kids weren't getting kidnapped because they were getting kidnapped. Um, they're, and the only way you could find them wasn't through social media. It was on melt cartons and flyers. I'm not right. saying those things weren't happening, but it's a lot more prominent now because now, because the, the drug influx has only created the human trafficking influx. So now our children, you know, it doesn't matter whether they're, you're, how pretty your kid is. Your, your kid doesn't have to be pretty. Your kid has to have a body for them to be able to use. As sad as that yeah. is to say, it's, it's the honest truth. And, uh, Yes. 
Yeah, it and so now it's, truth, it's back so. then, you know, uh, back when your oldest was a, a lot younger, it was easier to let him uh, go and run around because of the fact that he didn't have the, the environment locally was a lot different than it is now. But now, not only that, but you, but you also have the parents who are the helicopter right. parents who cannot believe that you would allow your child to be at home even for a half an hour, you know, like. Oh, Andrew ran from like 10 in the morning till 8 o'clock at night. He'd come home for a drink and a snack, bring his friends in. Like, y'all want something to eat, too? Exactly. And you'd come home and you'd like, <laughs> I mean, you have like 10 kids in your house. My, but, my parents were like that. They'd come home and like, they would, you know, I'd have my two or three friends over. My sisters would have two of their, I mean, there would be like a house full of like 15 kids. I'm be like, well, who's staying for dinner and who's not? I need to know if I'm ordering pizza or what I'm doing here, you know, or ship everybody home for dinner and then after dinner right. bring them back because I can't feed all these kids, you know, and um, and, and that was back then. Right. And, I, and I wanted to create that same environment with our house. But again, it's like getting other parents to trust our parents because these parents know that, well, they're not always home right after school. You don't know what's going on. Well, and they don't, you don't know what's going on at another parent's house is the problem too is um, you know, I, I, I made a few mistakes when Andrew was younger of sudden let him go and, uh, go to places that I probably should have met the parents first. I'll go ahead and admit that I was just like, okay, have fun at, uh, yeah. which well, exactly. Was, but now you, know? you don't, I mean, now it, you've got kids who are like, he, Hey, yeah, it was a little, but social now you've got parents who allow their kids yeah. to have, you know, full on like knives and guns in their house. And you're like, Hey, it's not that I'm. <sighs> I, do I right. really trust a 10 year old when I see that one of his friends has like an entire like knife kit and I'm like and this isn't like this kid's not a hunter they're not hunting so like why do you have all these insane like why does your friend right. show you pictures of this like what what's going on in his home mm-hmm. life like now I'm like eh, hey I go to so and so's house uh, let me go over and like let me go meet the parent and there's a handful of parents that I haven't really fully met you know I dropped off the kid to the house like shook their hands and let them go but other kids um, you know I I'm like, hey, I know that your friend kind of comes from. I've seen the pictures that he sent you about what this kid's like hobbies are, and I'm like, is your friend's like hobby like killing rabbits and gutting them? Because that's kind of weird, you know. Uh, you were, yeah, that's you know. So and, and, and again, it's just you know, uh, and and I don't want to pass judgment onto other parents because they can pass judgment onto me as well, and that's okay. And they be like, this woman's house is not clean all the time. Well, yeah, bitch, you got two parents who are working fucking forty hours, and you're a stay at home mom. So you're right. Our house isn't always clean, and we have two dogs, and we have a cat, and we have all these things going on in our home. Uh, suck it. But, uh, you know, but, you know, but my mom, I know that she yeah. used to worry about that stuff, but, you know, it, she she still let me go over there. Like, hey, I know this mom's not always home, but mm-hmm. uh, my daughter is being uh, a bitch, so get her out of the house and let her go over there anyways. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, you know, it, just because the mom's not home, maybe they're... Yep. The kids that you went to go hang out with were like your kids, you know, for two hours they were home. They're still good kids just because their mom's not there doesn't mean that. But kids will be kids and they'll get into stuff, you know. Yeah, they'll get into all kinds of shit. I don't know. I, uh, the parenting is definitely a lot different. Well, I have an eight year gap between my kids. Uh, my first one was born in 96 and then the second one was born in 2003. So, uh, well, almost eight, seven, and then for t- two months, they're seven years apart and then eight years apart after that but anyways uh so definitely just that eight year gap things had changed considerably from when you know i was a uh, first had andrew so i don't know I, I i think it has a lot to do with people just feeling like everybody should helicopter their kids and you're right about the needles on the sidewalk and human trafficking but also i think that social media Absolutely. has added to that i despise I despise when I see people posting pictures of license plates and cars. Like I just saw this car come down my street three times and uh, I'm just really concerned, blah, blah, blah. Maybe they're looking <laughs> for an address or they're on the wrong side of they're, they're on East Sandusky and there should be on West Sandusky, yeah. you know, or something like that. Like it really pisses me off. Like I saw somebody who, had posted something about what he had saw at a school, like a, a car had circled like three or four times and he gave a full description of what the guy looked like, but took a picture of the car with the license plate and posted. Come to find out a week later, it was just a parent who, um, they were co- the co-parents, you know, and usually he didn't pick up the son from school and he wasn't sure where he was supposed to go. I think it was like Jefferson Elementary. Yeah. I think that's the one with the crazy. It's super weird. A very weird, uh, weird. Yeah. Uh, pick up. 
Yeah. And he was really confused. And so he was like, he, he was looking at all the kids and blah, blah, blah. I mean, completely shame this guy. I mean, it got to the point where it had been shared like 500 times. And there were people like, I'm about to go with my gun. And you know what I mean? Like, oh my God, people, you're literally, this is what you call a, a lynch mob. This yeah. is a virtual lynch mob. I, I understand, you know, I understand people wanting to be, people would be aware it also annoys me when I see people who post warnings about products. Like I saw a woman who posted not to buy these pacifiers. She had an eight month old and she had taken pictures of the pacifiers and the package said zero to three months. She was like, these are not safe. Don't give these to your baby, blah, blah, blah. My baby just sucked it in her mouth and almost choked on it. And everybody was like, um, well, you're using a zero to three month pacifier on an eight month old baby. And she was like, no, the one I had for him was that he was using was for a uh, six month and up. But OK, so why is the package that you took a picture exactly. of like zero to three? You know, like you're just trying to cause a big old stiff. And now there's a whole bunch of people that aren't going to use those because well, exactly. that's all they read. You know, that that. Drives no, 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 me you're tighter. right. I oh, my God. I, I have to agree. I get so I'm so fucking annoyed with social media on so many levels. There are so many things that people are just social media is okay. I, at this point, I'm not going to lie. I miss when social media was posting about your fucking food. And when you took a shit, okay. Like I miss those social media posts. I really do. Um, uh, I'm so tired of the story posts, you know, like, you know, uh, so I went to Walmart today and I was shopping and let me tell you what, all I wanted to do was blah, 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 blah. Three pages later about your experience at Walmart. Don't shop at this Walmart ever again. Oh my gosh. Shut the right? fuck up. Okay. We, we all have bad experience. I, and, and then it goes viral. And yeah, I, I, the thing is, is the internet uh, didn't become a widely used item until the 90s. I mean, I know it's been around since, geez, since like the 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s. They used it very rudimentary you know uh to communicate but on a wide scale in the 90s and it's a new technology that we're growing you know it's, it, it started off as just like little chat rooms and message boards and 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 things like that and then it grew into media and music and people creating their own content and people starting blogs and you know and and so i think that we're it we're it's it, you're watching evolution take place. Like this is we're trying to evolve to where the internet works for us. I mean, I like the fact that it's free and open. You anybody can post whatever they want, as offensive as it is. Um, not that I agree with child pornography or anything like that, everybody. Um, but I love the idea that it is a free form that we can connect, and I think that it has helped us connect globally across the world with um, sharing ideas and realizing that. Here in America, we aren't as free and as great as we have been told and fed all these years. And I think that's what scares the government is the fact that we can organize very quickly. We share ideas. We read other news. We get opinions from people in other countries. And uh, we're starting to see ourselves from the outside. And, and a lot of us are like, mm, and that I don't is know exactly why net neutrality was able to get passed is because they don't want us to have access to those kind of things. And that is my. Yeah, oh, they, they do. They want us to be able to shut us down from us being able to reach out to other news sources, to other, to other stories, to other abilities. And again, it's that's how the revolution gets cut. Cut. They'll cut us off if they think we're going to have a revolution because the internet would be what we would use. Well, look what you know, women, to I mean, look and the so they'll march. just be like North Korea. It's almost been one year since women's shut march. It off. I mean, it's it. We're very close to upcoming to the yep. to the year of that, and that was a beautiful thing. And that all happened. We're yeah, we're one week away from that. And uh, here's the here's the funny thing is that that literally came about because a grandmother in Hawaii said, "When it, it this is how it started." A grandmother uh, email or put on Facebook and tagged her daughters in it and said, "Wouldn't it be great if we showed up the day that he was inaugurated to let him know no more?" And boom. That viral sensation turned into 5 million women or whatever the crap it was across America, you know, the day that Trump was inaugurated of saying, fuck you, you're not going to, you know, we're, we're here to let you know that we're here to fight back. Look at what happened in the year 2017 because of his presidency and how women gathered together and they were like, fucking shit. Look what yep. happened over one Facebook post. Let's go ahead and let's put on some neutrality. So that way, if they really want to connect with each other, they're going to pay for it. You know, and I, I honestly believe that this is why... 
I, I really yep. believe in my conspiracy tin hat foil thing is that they were so uh, shocked about how quickly uh, that formation happened. I mean, you're talking about logistics. You're talking about everybody, the permits, everything that had, had to have happened. And it was getting buses ready, busing people into Washington, D.C. or into major cities. Having that happen so quickly. Yeah. Oh, the organization was amazing. I was in that group. I didn't go. Um, Miles got to go, but I didn't go. But I was in the group and watched everything take place in the organization. And the, okay, uh, we're all going to have this, ba- this bus. Um, we've still got six yeah. seats. Now you're here, yeah. Am I still there? Hello? Okay. What the hell? <laughs> I think I keep pushing the mute button. Sorry, everybody. Um, but I did see, you know, where people were like, okay, we're traveling from here and here. Um, we're going to pass through these four towns. Does yep. anybody need a ride? You know, I, I mean, the organization was just amazing. And I, that's just how our country is. And in the last year, I, Maybe I haven't paid attention in the past. But I didn't like Bush. So I was all about like making fun of Bush all the time. And I know that Obama got some really nasty hatred. But I have never in my life seen people turn against a president like they have against Trump. And you know what I noticed? Because I bartend and I watch. I don't watch TV all day. But I have four TVs on different channels all day that I listen to while I'm working. Last night I saw a, um infomercial for yeah, Trumpy yeah, yeah, Bear. Yeah, yeah. Is that, have you is, seen is, that is, yet? Only, only two, mm-hmm. only two payments of nineteen ninety five. Teddy bear with an American oh, flag that rolls handling. up into a blanket. He's literally trying to market his presidency and make money. I mean, they've got the Trump coin, the Trump bear. What other? I'm sure they got plates and memorabilia. I mean, he's literally trying to. What do they call that when they? Um, it's not monetize. Monetize. Yeah, I think it is monetize. I think you're yeah, right. They're on trying that. to make him into a product. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there's a certain term for, you know, however, you know, they're, they're trying to make yep. him into a, a product that they can sell. They're trying to make as much money as they can off of him being president. And he's, uh, I don't want to get started on Trump. I, I'm sorry, but that just, I just saw that ad last night. And I was like, Jesus, yeah. anything for no, a fucking I mean, that- buck with that dude. People should work for Medicaid. And I mean, he is just so nasty. And that's what upsets me is, is, is. And he had shithole countries, and the, and I wouldn't let a poor person. I, I, he is just so down on on ninety percent of the world, basically, not just Americans, but uh, anything, any laws that they can pass to hurt us. I mean, it is no, just I would have to agree. He is real. a uh, he's a thorough piece of shit. Uh, I think everybody who's listening knows that we absolutely despise him, uh, and he is a, he was terrible. He was a terrible choice. Um, I under. <sighs> I have, I understand, I understand why we, I, okay, no, I don't understand why people voted for him, but I understand why they voted for him, if that makes sense. Like, I get that they, right, they thought, they bought into the They bought into, into the it. hysteria of Trump. They bought into a non-politician, um, billionaire, who they... Yep, who's going to make America America great again. Look what he did with The Apprentice. Look what he did with this. Look what he did with The Towers. Like, nobody really... (laughs) That's not a country, people. (laughs) They they bought into what what Trump was talking they never they they just they didn't they didn't care about his bigotry they didn't care about his sexism they didn't care about all these things about him they bought into a non-politician they were so tired of the divisiveness that came out in the last eight years with Obama they got so tired of all the hatred everybody mm-hmm. thought and that was the Republicans, though, that, that, that stopped Obama from doing everything that he wanted. Could you imagine know. if Obama had been able to do everything that he set out to do when he was first president? But I will tell you, here is the silver lining to our cloud. I've mentioned several times I work at a social club. It's a very small town, blah, blah, blah. Small minds. Love Trump. Um, the tide oh, yeah. is turning, especially with that new tax plan. I'll tell you what, almost everybody, I, the other day I was sitting there listening to people talk about politics. And the same people who months ago were like, oh, I love Trump. We're like this fucking idiot here. You know what I mean? Like, there goes my taxes. The tide is finally turning with the dumb people who bloodly were blindly were like, Oh, I just love Trump. He's gonna make this life because it's starting to affect them, you know, and they're like, Oh, I don't like this. Especially property taxes. I know a lot of people are really upset about that. Um, so there's just a lot of people who are, are very upset and starting to I'm just glad to finally see all these diehard 
Trump supporters. And, you know, I almost feel like I hate what's happening. But at the same time, I, I think that you said this in a prior podcast or maybe in a personal conversation that we had is that we had to let things fall this bad for people to realize how good that, that we did have it and, and how much we need real politicians and, and politics in our country. They're not a reality show. And people. Please, They're no, not for Oprah entertainment. I'm not this trying to be real. a dick, but for we, the love of God, no. No, politicians. please. Politicians. politicians. Not I, I want a fucking politician. She did. It's not that I don't respect. I understand that Oprah came from. I mean, she lived in a shithole. I get it's where it, I... Oprah? But she has been more out of her bad situation than she was in her bad situation. And I think... And, and- and she's done yeah. some questionable things over time. She don't have the most, you know, no. and I would be, I would back <laughs> Oprah if she were yeah. big into politics. She actually had a political you know? stance. If she actually had um, been, if she was actually a part of, how, right. like, I have no pro. I really don't have a problem with Hollywood elites becoming, like, I have a problem with them become, becoming politicians. I don't have a problem with that's where they've always been. I, I really don't. Like, I feel like if somebody has the money to be able, and they actually are investing, like, okay, Here's the difference between like Oprah Winfrey and Ashton Kutcher. Okay. The biggest difference is obviously not be beyond their sexes and their colors and whatever else and their money that they make. It's not beyond that. But Ashton Kutcher has actually gone in with the FBI. He has gone in and he has saved children. He has become a part of the system. He took his money and he went in for his own, on his own personal time went in and got involved with um with with saving kids out of terrible situations i mean this guy didn't he didn't just do i mean it, it's like steve Boucher, maybe it was a fireman and, and 9-11 happened he went in there and, and he and he you know it's oh, those people sure i don't have problems with because they were a part of the system and they choose to try to make the system better but oprah never once was a part of the system she never once put her toes into the actual reality of living the american life except her Yep. to uh, endorse Obama. That was about the only thing political she's ever done. I don't have a problem with an everyday, a common man, an everyday, a Joe or whatever. As long as they know their politics. I'm not asking you to be a lawyer. But, you know, if you are versed in politics, you understand the Constitution, the laws, and what needs to happen, I'm all for you. Go go for it, buddy. You know, I don't have a problem with celebrities or wrestlers or or any of these people who you comedians but, I mean, look, like look, look, look sadly what happened with al franken i mean al franken was a comedian and unfortunately I mean? I mean we all know how al franken yes. has has gone to his own world that's a whole other story but prior to that though he was right. a comedian but and an prior example. to what has happened over the last year or so um he made a he made a true difference in his state he actually he made a difference and yes, like that's what did. i'm talking about like yes, that's a difference between um that was somebody who who went in and said okay if i'm going to do this i'm going to do this right and he did his best ability to do things right and that is a difference I, oprah hasn't been yep she that's didn't go in she about. hasn't been hanging out with people in outside of her outside of her neighborhood she's not out there hanging out in oakland you know she's not out there Please tell me what Oprah's plan for our country yep, is, exactly. and then I will fully support exactly. you. Please tell me. You know, why Why do you think Oprah should be president? Seriously, please tell yeah. me, because she gives away things. I, I'm not making but fun of Oprah. Know, Oprah, did, Oprah did you know what happened with I've those cars? I mean, if y'all did not understand that, when Oprah gave away um, all those brand new vehicles to all of those, the, all the audience members, there was so many stipulations that a majority of those people could not even take the cars. They needed to put $7,000 down for the brand new cars that they were just handed and or like there was this whole you have to read it it's insane but there was all these stipulations for these people to get these brand new cars they couldn't just take those home these people thought they were going to get these brand new vehicles no they needed to pay all the sales tax on a brand new vehicle so they had to pay seven thousand dollars or they had to do this or they had to forfeit it so majority of these people you know that were in her audience had already spent an arm and a leg just to be you know to drive to get the flights to whatever to go see her and then they're like oh by the way you got a brand new car I also need seven thousand dollars out of your bank account right now, and you need to pay for this, this, and this. And I'm like, whoa! Like, so you right. can't, you can't even say that she even gave anything away for free because she really didn't. Okay, it's different between giving all your audience members free books um, and some free new hairspray and something they might have charged a hundred bucks for, but to give them a nineteen thousand dollar car to make these people believe for even those moments, like you just ripped out any kind of hope. 
you know, like you gave somebody hope and then said, mm, sorry, never mind. It's like finding out that you win the lottery and then somebody saying, well, your credit score sucks. So you don't really get to win the lottery. You know, it's like, it was such a, a sham. And so I said, I'm like, it right. wasn't, she didn't do things correctly. And she could have done a lot of things to have made those people's life a lot easier, but she put a stipulation, but she hasn't, she and could she have hasn't. all these years. She's taken all this money. I'm not saying that she hasn't been in communities, but yeah. she hasn't really put her foot out onto the actual soil of real living in America. And until she does that, and until she proves to me that she understands politics, she understands procedures, she understands a 519 page tax reform bill. Until she starts doing that, then I'm I'm sorry. But at this point, Tommy Loharan knows more about politics than Oprah Winfrey. And I fucking hate Tommy. Everybody know I hate that woman. She's right. a fucking bitch. But she knows more about politics than Oprah Winfrey does. And yep. that's a sad fucking truth. Exactly. Yeah, I uh, I totally agree that, you know, it, even some, I, I really think like with Al Franken, comedians, if you watch enough stand up specials or whatever, they have a great take on politics. And then a lot of times you find that they understand it and they put it, they break it down for you. And I think a lot more comedians should consider a career in politics. You don't, we don't need lawmakers or, or I'm sorry, we don't need lawyers. We don't need people who are trained in politics we need people who know politics you know you can be an every man common man whatever as long as you know your shit get up in there and make change you don't have to and another problem is is they say anybody can be president that's true but you know what anymore you gotta yeah. have 500 they, million they, dollars to do it it's not but back How in the day we used to be able to uh, back in the day anybody could have ran for it or even for local mayors yeah, and all that they're like you know somebody um when we were joking around last year like oh Amanda you should totally run for being the mayor of this town blah, blah, blah. like absolutely I would but what I have to do in order to a become a part of this is be able to get to speed like there's so speed. much like you can't have this on your credit score you need to have this amount like there there's serious litigation that if you guys actually look into what it becomes it's so dumb it's um you know it's other people who uh there was a locally in ohio somewhere near us uh there i think it was in lucas county their treasurer had to stop down because her credit score um and i get it because she's in charge of their finances but her personal credit score was too low for them to be able to um allow her to have the position so somebody who was actually voted in by the people to do her job they said well i'm sorry but because you can't pay your bills on time you can't have this and i get that See, and that's not fair. I, I I do get that. I understand that. But your personal finances versus your business finances. Yep. Say, like, that's your job to take care of. So that's because she can't handle her own personal finances. Doesn't mean she can't do her job and handle business finances. Yeah, just finances. because you might that's have fallen behind on credit card you know? bills doesn't mean that you're going to that's bankrupt just, an entire town. Well, then she could possibly steal money from us. Do you think that just why, because somebody, like, and that's a problem. Everybody assumes that you have a bad credit score that you're going to fuck. Right, oh. right. So now they're that's a thief because all. they have a bad credit score. Okay, that's. But you know that's part of your job. Like you know, I where I work, I have a bad credit score. But I'll tell you what, my drawer exactly. comes out right every fucking week. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like just. Oh man, oh. this country is so it fucked. Is. It is. I, but I and on that note, you know, we we've had we've had our variety hour ish time. Uh, no, this. this we have, but we've got a little bit of editing to do, so yeah. it should go back down to around yeah, a yeah. minute. Or, I mean, an hour. A minute. Yeah, just a minute <laughs> this week. Sorry, everybody. Um, we were going to do something else, but we kind of went with uh, just variety talk this week. Next week, we are going to be talking about, we're going to go back to opiates and kind of revisit. That was yeah. episode two, I believe, wasn't I believe it, so. that we did? Um, and that was one of our most listened to episodes honestly and so we're kind of kind of revisit that episode and we're gonna talk about where did opiates come from uh miles has done a lot of research and she's got a, a really interesting um story to tell you guys about um, a man named gary webb uh, and his last name is spelled w-e-b-b if you want to read up on it before our podcast uh and his role and um the wikipedia entry form is really good uh, she wrote up something really great, and we're just going to kind of talk about the CIA, and um, you'll definitely want to put a tinfoil hat together if you want to <laughs> join us correctly. Uh, we don't want we don't want them reading our thoughts. They can listen to our <laughs> podcast, but they're not allowed to read our thoughts. Um, but we're going to be talking about that, so if you have any input or anything that um, maybe you kind of want us to add in that we might not know about, um, but we definitely want to explore how did we get here, how... 
that the opiate crisis becomes so bad. I mean, it, it's almost a reminder of the crack cocaine epidemic in the 90s, which I believe is is what the Gary Webb, I don't have it pulled up right now, but I, I believe that's what the Gary Webb well, is yep, talking and, about and was and the crack cocaine was, and how it was and built so in, in South Central, Central and uh, a lot of the things that came out of that and how this guy right. miraculously killed himself with two gunshots well, to the head uh, randomly. Uh, it was considered suicide, but we all know it and- wasn't. It's been well known. I mean, it's not like the CIA has admitted it or anything, but it's a basic fact now that they've flooded black communities with crack cocaine and whatnot in an, in an effort to suppress them. And um, we're just going to kind of be talking about some of those things and like, how do we get to where we are today? And uh, another thing that I think, uh, you know, with a lot of our soldiers, I went to Iraq and I, Afghanistan. That's a big trade of theirs is heroin. Um, they grow uh, poppy plants over there. And a lot of our soldiers to get through uh, the stress of battle, um, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, things like that. They did heroin Especially and they brought it Vietnam. back with them. And that contributed to right exactly vietnam and and just recently and then that's where you know like in the 60s you kind of heard a little bit about heroin and it kind of took a back seat to crack cocaine and cocaine in the 70s and then crack cocaine in the 80s and 90s um and and now we hear we're back to heroin and, and um i guess we can even blame pharmaceutical yeah, the only reason that we even hear now too, is because the opiate crisis hit so many white kids I mean, that's something else that, you know, I, I and we're, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to bring up some, some racial divide or anything else, but it was a, it was a very, no. there was a, a great um, read that I was doing on the internet uh, earlier this week that said, it's amazing that, you know, how much publicity this has got considering that we've had this problem once before, um, but because that, because that was affecting a different color yeah. of, now that not it affects, white, it affects people white people, and, people. And, and overall white families that suddenly now all this legislation is coming in to, you know, uh, put down the pharmaceuticals and let's sue them and let's do that. Well, why weren't you doing this when it was when it, this has been happening for 10 years and when it was affecting black communities? But now that's affecting the white communities. Now you guys care, you know, and that's uh, another, you know, kind of what we've done to uh, to kind of seclude ourselves and, and how we have allowed these things to happen. And when people, um, you know, what, what they're really ready to do and um, are we ready to go to the streets and make a difference or, you know, are we going to just continue to allow these things to happen and say, well, our government will fix this one day. So I'm going to turn my head and uh, just not see what's actually happening to us. Yep. Now, have you ah, seen the Dave no Chappelle special on Netflix yet? Oh, okay. The, have you seen his yes, newest one? I, I haven't rewatched um, it like four times, but I should have watched it like four times. I heard like you have to watch it like four times. It's just so damn good. Well, he was talking about transgenders and he was like, I, and I, I'm trying to recall from me watching it a week ago or whatever, but he made a very interesting point where, cause, and it just follows off what you just said, where he was saying that nobody wanted to talk about transgenders and gender identity and um, giving them rights or whatever until yeah. the white man wanted to talk about it. You know, he was talking about Caitlyn Jenner, I believe, and he kind of segued into that thought. And you just talking about that completely reminded How me of him Chappelle's making that point. stand up is so fucking worth watching. Thing. There's so many things that he talks about from um, I, it, it, everything. He really, he everything. hits the nail on the head. Oh, <laughs> kick her in the pussy. Kick right her in there. the pussy. Um, Sorry. He's so oh, funny, um, right. but he his stand up is is both um, extremely hilarious and extremely insightful and morose as well. Oh, very, very George Carlin ish, and I really, really, really appreciated it for sure. Make Absolutely. you think, but also make um, you laugh. I, ooh, I'm getting cookies. I just got warm cookies served to me. Thank ooh. you, husband. Oh, oh, oh Mister Miles. Mm. It's like he's always trying to show off when you do podcasts. Like, look what a great it's husband true. I am. It's true. <laughs> I know I'm he's just a great husband. On bag, but most <laughs> is an amazing husband. And I say that to his face, guys. So it's no, it's it's, it's no lie. Um, <laughs> no, he really is. He's pretty mm-hmm. great. He's pretty great. Um. So yeah, that's about it for this week. Uh, if you guys have anything you want to add about the opiate crisis if you know like the origins or anything uh uh, obscure or whatever um there's plenty of ways to contact us on our facebook page our website um our email miles and crawford at gmail.com um you can find us plenty of places we both check our twitter um 
Miles runs our Twitter almost exclusively. I try to get on there, but I end up just messing shit up. I, I, I'm I seriously, I, I like on Twitter, I have a ridiculous posted. amount of times a day, and um, yeah. and, and she pretty much runs that Twitter, and she does an amazing job, like networking and communicating with people. So, I, so that's kind of her thing. I kind of manage the Facebook as much as I can, and uh, we we share responsibilities, but we don't discuss <laughs> it. We just funny. do it. It's kind of funny. Yeah, I thought you posted something, <laughs> but, it's, but that's how it works. I mean, even if you just tweet us a link that you want us to read about, I mean, we don't have to have a full-blown conversation if you're not into that, but definitely, if you think that there's something that we can include, tweet us a link to something that we should read, Mm -hmm. and we'll follow up on it on our own, you know? Uh, But if there's something that you think that we should know about, about definitely. So, uh, we're going to wrap it up. Seriously, I'm shoving my face into cookies uh, right now. I apologize. (laughs) Yeah, that's okay. (laughs) Um, As always... If you'd love to, we'd love it if you uh, donated to our co-op on Patreon. Or, that'd be cool, too. Um, you can always visit yeah, our website. ITunes, we're, we're, yeah. we're fully on oh, Podbean now. We've gotten, uh, we're off of SoundCloud, yes. but I mean, we, we, we'll Lipson. still have some episodes on SoundCloud, uh, but we're... Our uh, most recent mm-hmm. that we can fit we're on there for free. Um, I'll have to Google go through play. and edit that, but we're on Lipson, we're on Sprecker, we're on, or Spreaker, uh... We just got on Podbean. We have our own website, Facebook, Twitter. Um, we're trying to get out there, you know, and then we're still on iTunes, Google And Crawford Play, bought some I really great radio. stickers. So maybe if you give um, us a review, radio. we'll send you a sticker. Oh. I'll send you a quarter size Crawford, sticker. Please tell about the quarter size stickers because this just makes me laugh. Uh, uh. I ordered stickers and was not paying attention to the dimensions that I ordered. I was like, that's a great deal. So I used our little logo and I printed them off and they just came today and I opened them up. I'm not joking. They're circle stickers. Um, they're the size of a quarter. And so you can barely make out what they say. They're adorable. And I was like, is that not the epitome of our podcast? It's always something. Always. It's always something. Always. Fucked. That's okay. <laughs> you know? We're cool with it, man. It's never perfect. So if you'd like a quarter size sticker, please. Donate a dollar. I'll send you a fucking sticker. (laughs) But uh, that's it for this week, everybody. Look forward to talking to you next week. And uh, goodbye. Unless you got something to add, Miles. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be like, all right, we're done. (laughs) I know. You had cookies in your Mm -hmm. mouth, so I figured that would be okay. (laughs) Let's see if we can find a cookie song to put in. (laughs) Wait, our background check oh my next God, week. Yes, it'll be, be so great. Monster. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> All right. All right. Goodbye, everybody.